Welcome back to the Triple Option. Paul Catalina, Stephen Simcox, locked on Horn Frogs with me. And Stephen, uh, the SEC, look, Georgia is still Georgia, although they've, I think they're going to look bored a lion's share of the year. They certainly now, did against Ball State in the first half. Yeah, uh, because they don't have, and, and this is not indicative of what their scheduling has been. They've played some good teams mm-hmm. in the non conference in years past. They've just, because Oklahoma's rotated off, because this is, a, I believe, the first year they're supposed to play them, and then next year they're supposed, like whatever that was. So that game's gone, and they've kind of you know there's a ball state in the schedule and all that. They're the early part of their schedule probably not as fun. They play South Carolina this week, which is interesting, yeah. but Georgia outside of this. But you look around after Texas beat Bama last week, LSU's already taken a loss. And granted, those are both two big, big name teams in, in Florida State and Texas. But they, um, you know, Ole Miss struggled against Tulane, who's better, you know, and, and Tulane beat USC last year, almost won the game without their starting quarterback. Right. You know, Tennessee played with their food with Austin P. You know, all these things that kind of happened here. Yeah, Auburn escaped against Cal on the road. Yeah. The night. You know, like there's. There's reason to believe that the SEC is down a little bit. I have my own theory, which I've kind of been saying on the show the last couple of days, which is the transfer portal is hurting the SEC maybe more. Like, it helps, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a very cyclical thing, but there are now – you can't stash players anymore and wait for them to develop. You know, you're a TCU guy. Your roster this year is peppered with ex-SEC players. Yeah. Peppered. Uh, you know – uh, LSU, like how many Alabama guys? Four, three? Mm-hmm. It's a really easy sell, yeah. right? Like, yeah. okay, you're not playing there. Just come over here. You can play. And a lot of instances as you get closer to home, right, you go find, okay, which guy on this roster is from? Oh, yeah, Brockermeyer. He's yeah. from Texas. He's, like, he's from boom. Metroplex, right? Yeah. And he, he comes and plays. Um, I think it definitely looks that way on paper right now. They're down. You know, the top of the league is still really good, but – Bama looked mortal last week. Um, you talked about LSU struggles. The SEC West in general, and you got Mississippi State and Auburn kind of in a transition. A&M got thumped. A&M got thumped. Um, and we talked about Ole Miss, you know, kind of struggling with Tulane. And, you know, there obviously seems like Lane Kiffin, there just seems to be a ceiling there. They're going to be a good team, probably not a great team. Um, and so top to bottom, are they as, as stacked as they've been? No. And maybe that opens up. You know, a slight window for some of these other conferences, even though you have, like, the team that just beat Alabama is is going to the SEC next yeah. year, as along with Oklahoma. Uh, but it does feel like there's a different energy there. And the transfer board makes a lot of sense. It's easier than ever to build your team quickly. Uh, and the best way to do that is to just find talented players from other teams. So where are you going to find that talent? You scour the rosters of the best teams in the country. Yeah, and look, it, it, like – for example, a guy like JoJo Earl, who's at TCU right now, mm-hmm. um, and I mean nobody, nobody in Fort Worth is is talking about the you know like, thank God they have JoJo Earl yet, but he's a really good player. He's a really talented guy, and he would have been the third or fourth wide receiver on Alabama this year, mm-hmm. but he can come to TCU and probably eventually be the number one guy, right? Yeah. And so he's there and. So instead of him being the number three or four for a year and then being one of the top two in his junior year and, and going to the NFL out of Alabama, he's going to go to TCU a year before that would all happen, and there's no patience anymore. It's just gone. You know, Brocker Meyer is like, okay, well, you might be the sixth offensive lineman at Bama, but TCU has an opening at your specific position. Mm-hmm. So, boom, there, you're, you're starting. And even though next year he would have been a starter no matter what at Alabama – but it's all about the now. Yeah. So now you don't have developmental guys, and you're, you know, you're getting out of the trans. Like sometimes you don't get equal things out of the transfer portal. Like it's, you know, sometimes you, you know, you throw in a, a JoJo Earl and you get out of Jermaine Burton. Like okay, right. that's a win for Alabama, right? Yeah. At least right now. Uh, sometimes you, you know, throw out a Brockermeyer and you get a guy who is kind of just a guy, but he's good enough to be on your roster, but he's not you know, the murderer's row that you've had before. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't really know what they can do to combat that besides just – and I'm talking about Alabama specifically, but besides just hitting the portal hard, yeah. um, how do you kind of make up for that? And then 
I mean, what do you, like, is there a team in that league right now? I guess maybe Tennessee. Like, who is the biggest threat to Georgia if there is one? I think ten, I think Tennessee is right now. Yeah. I think I think LSU can be. Yeah. Um, you know the. Um, I like I I I put I don't want to put too much too many eggs in that first game basket on either side of it, but because I do think LSU is going to be really good, and if they get things right, I mean they've got a really good quarterback. They just you know they've got an established running game outside of him, and so if they do those things. If you let, if you just, you know, tear, tell Harold Perkins to paint an X on the quarterback and go, then I think everything's going to be all right for them. But, you know, I think LSU could. I mean, Alabama might be able to, but again, they like. If you look at last year, you know, like you know, Nick Saban said, "Well, the only games that we lost, we lost by one score." But like, yeah, you also beat A and M by one score, and you like you had close games for the first time in a long time. And the reason that you, you know, maybe won some of those games because you had Bryce Young and now you don't have Bryce Young. And so since that's over and now you're in a developmental phase at quarterback, maybe those close games, you're not going to win anymore. Um, You know, look, Georgia might find themselves in a similar position if Carson Beck winds up not being that good, but he looks like he's pretty good. I mean, like, you know, so I, like, I can't, you know, I can't make that assumption. And and look, I think somebody's probably going to jump up and bite Georgia because it's really hard to do what they're trying to do because nobody's really done it. In the, nobody has done it in the modern era. Like since World War II, nobody's won three in a row. Right. It's, 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 it's not a hard thing. It's a hard thing to do. And it's harder now with all the parity that exists, you know. And they lose transfers. They're going to lose a couple guys mm-hmm. that, again, may not go help anybody win a national championship, but Georgia replaces them with somebody who's not ready to compete at that level yet. You know, they've got to develop them. And that's really the, the, the rub here because I, I agree with the premise of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is, like, if Georgia three-peats, mm-hmm. nobody's going to care. Like, from a negative standpoint, nobody's yeah. going to care that Kentucky struggled against Eastern Kentucky this past yeah. Saturday, right? Like, they're just going to wave the SEC flag again because it's like, well, we won the championship. And, and that's kind of been how it, how it is for a long time. Um, and, and so that's really the, the key, I guess, from a, a national standpoint for the league. But I think if you if you put a magnifying glass on the teams top to bottom, you are seeing a drop off or just other people closing the gap, which hopefully is good for college football and what we were talking about with, you know, a super league maybe eventually forming and, and all the the haves and have nots. Um, but it does feel like this is a different year for the conference. And maybe th- maybe there's an opportunity here. Uh, for for that gap to be closed, at least when we're talking about parity within the within the conferences. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, um, and look, I think that the real, you know, end game here is the SEC champion is in, and the runner up in the SEC is not. Like, if there's just one SEC team in this, then maybe mission accomplished. Like the and. I think to like to make it like to drive it home would be there's one SEC team in this and you can't make uh yeah but for like the fifth or sixth team that's doesn't get in and be like well if only that that had not happened you know mm-hmm. they have two losses in the SEC but you know uh, Michigan has only one loss in the Big 10 so you know like even they're like, like splitting hairs to to that point so if you have an SEC team, a Big Ten team, a Big 12 team, an ACC or a Pac-12 team in the top four, and then you're not talking about another SEC team in that top four at all, then I think that, yeah, maybe maybe everybody else is making a dent. I know it's super early. Do you think Hugh Freeze could get Auburn to a place where, you know, I mean, they had a run there. It was like once a development cycle. They were yeah. national championship caliber. Do you see that trajectory for them again? Yes, if they can avoid, if he can avoid um, the the least patient fan base in America, you know, um, because and look, he'll probably do really well in the portal. Mm-hmm. He'll he'll eventually. Like right now, I, you know, clearly he's got a quarterback that he's just like, well, this was the best guy I could get. Um, you can kind of see, like, you know, Keon Coleman went to play for Jordan Travis because. That was his quarterback <laughs> at Michigan State. <laughs> so he like there are 
there are those things like once he gets his quarterback, which I think he wanted Grayson McCall, mm -hmm. and then that for whatever reason that didn't work out that he went back to Coastal. But once he gets his guy in their quarterback and everything, yeah, I think they can. I think they'll contend. I mean that because that's kind of how they are. And then because they do so well, then the weight of expectation takes the least patient fan base in America and makes them go. Okay, we would like seven of these in a row. And you're like, well, <laughs> no one has won three in a row, so let me get to the second one. They're like, no, seven in a row. <laughs> we would like the University of Alabama not to exist. Like, when you beat them, the university disintegrates. Like, it, like in Infinity War. <laughs> like, that's what we want. <laughs> you stab just, your fingers. And and done. That's what we would like. <laughs> And they're like, I don't know if that's going to happen. They're like, well, then you're a quitter. Get and we don't, yeah. we don't need that attitude here <laughs> on the planes. So, um, yeah, I, I, think that, I think that if they, they do. I, like, Hugh Freeze is an excellent coach. I question, like, how you can know all you know about Hugh Freeze and then go, yeah, this guy's trustworthy. Seems like, yeah, seems like the guy we need. Um, that, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a few red flags there, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, but it is a league that's in a lot of, uh, just in a lot of transition. I mean, Florida has a really good recruiting class. I know coming in next year, but they're rebuilding again. Um, we talked about Tennessee is good, but they have, you know, they have some limitations. And so I guess it, it's just going to be a matter of how long does it take some of those schools? Does it all come together for them? But at the moment definitely feels like, uh, it's it's a top it's a top heavy league and top heavy meaning there's one really 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 good team mm -hmm. and some other good teams but not the dominance you would typically see in that in that conference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Stephen, thank you so much. I enjoy our time so vividly. Thanks, I'm Paul. To, I like I like to make the end like Mister Rogers. Just <laughs> talk about what we learned about each other. <laughs> what do we learn? What do we learn today? <laughs> I need to get a sweater and change my shoes. <laughs> 56 minutes into the show. I like that. Yeah, just like walk, start walking out the door. <laughs> All, right. All right. And then guys. everybody knows I'm going to be like back in here in an hour sitting four <laughs> feet away. <laughs> but this is a different Paul. This is, you know, yeah. this is independent Paul. This is, this is comfy chair Paul. Yeah. No hall monitors. This is here. you can't hide the stomach in the chair Paul. <laughs> And that is that is desk Paul. That's corporate Paul. That's corporate. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stooge for the, for mm -hmm. the money over there. Over here, we're we're fighting the power. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's Mr. Catalina. Yeah, this is just Paul. This that's that is Manhattan. This is Portland, Oregon, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the differences. This guy might take me to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> we're uh, over there. I've got to take you to Morton's. Bottom line, uh, we're Ruth's, Chris, or Morton's or nowhere. Right. You know. But uh, yeah, we'll see you again next Wednesday. Uh, TCU in Houston this week. Uh, Houston had like they've had a very narrow win against UTSA and a very uh, maddening loss to them against Rice. Yes, uh, and then now you, uh, your TCU Horn Frogs, welcome them this week, right to Fort Worth. It's in Houston. It's in Houston. Okay, yeah, it's it's actually primetime game on Fox. It's Houston's Big Twelve opener. Yeah, uh, so don't really know what to make of either of those teams. I mean, I, conventional wisdom tells me TCU should win, mm -hmm. but both have had very strange starts. Um, and you know, like Doug Belk a couple of years ago was sort of the the hot assistant name around mm -hmm. around the state. That defense didn't look great against JT Daniels mm -hmm. last week, but um, yeah, a good early season kind of barometer for both those teams. Yep, JT Daniels has been to 